for ever by Paul Jennings. Every kid in the class was laughing at Richard. Well, everyone except Tim. He felt more like crying. After all, Richard was his brother. Even Ms Fish, the teacher, had to bite her tongue to stop herself chuckling. She stared out of the window, watching Richard leap around in the playground. Tim, she said. Tim sighed. Then he picked up his crutches and swung his way to the door. Another gale of laughter rocked the room as he left. Richard was at it again. Toilet paper. Why was Richard so mad about toilet paper? Why couldn't it be newspaper? Or paper bags? Why did it always have to be toilet paper? Today, it was worse than usual. In the past, Richard had wrapped up letterboxes and sticks and garden spades. But today, took the cake. Richard had wrapped himself. He looked like a mummy risen from the dead. Bound head to foot in toilet paper. Loose bits flapped in the breeze as he danced around the playground. Tim hobbled across the yard. Come on, he said gently to his brother. Come back inside. Ah, 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 barked Richard. Ah, was his only word. If you could call it a word. Richard had never spoken a sensible sentence in his life. As Tim approached, Richard pranced around like a dog when someone tries to take a ball from its mouth. He darted in and out, wanting and not wanting to be caught at the same time. Oh, no, Tim said as he saw Richard glance at a nearby gum tree. Tim tried to shepherd his brother away, but the crutches in his tired arms slowed him down. In a flash, Richard was scrambling up the tree trunk. Tim suddenly felt very tired. The crutches chafed his armpits. His head throbbed. The pain that always gnawed at his chest was worse than ever. He lowered himself to the grass. Please come down, Richard, he said. I can't climb trees. Ah! 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 barked Richard. Tim looked towards the school. The teachers had agreed to give Richard a trial. Two months to see if they could handle him. If not, he would have to find another school. Tim shook his head. Nobody could handle Richard, except Tim. He had to think of something. Otherwise there would be a fuss, and Richard wouldn't be allowed to stay. Come on, Richard, he yelled. Please come down. The bell rang, and kids started streaming out into the yard. Soon, there was a big circle standing around the tree, laughing, pointing, joking. Richard waved a white toilet roll in one bandaged hand. Please don't, Tim said to himself. Richard started to unroll his treasure. Soon, a long ribbon was fluttering out from his arm, longer and longer, like a never-ending flag, flapping and waving in the sunshine. Finally, it broke. The wind caught the fragile paper and lifted it above the head of the crowd. Kids jumped and reached, yelling and laughing. The toilet paper twisted and snaked towards the school. Finally, it drifted down and the mob grabbed it wildly, pulling the sheets apart and throwing them into the wind. Richard swung around in the tree like a ghostly monkey. He began pulling his paper bandage away and throwing it down on the laughing mob of kids. Tim's heart dropped as he saw teachers coming with a ladder. He had to get Richard down before they frightened him. Otherwise, he might fall on someone or hurt himself. If that happened, Richard might be sent home for good. Tim closed his eyes and tried to shut out the angry blood-red clouds that swirled inside his head. Think of snow, he said to himself. A wonderful picture filled his mind. Soft, silent flakes of snow fell gently to the ground. Imaginary houses carried banks of whiteness. Every branch bowed beneath a cold burden. The snowman stood watching without a word. Peace. Nothing disturbed this wintry peace. Now Tim knew what to do. The snow had never let him down. Tim opened his eyes. Teachers were hustling across the yard with a ladder. Kids were jumping and shouting, enjoying the show. He had to hurry. He limped towards the tree on his crutches and then started fishing around in his pocket. Hurry, 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 he said to himself, and then, got him! He pulled out two squashed sachets of honey that his dad had bought back from a motel, the type that had just enough for one slice of toast. Tim quickly pushed them both into a hole in the side of the tree. Hey, what's this in here? He called in a loud voice, he pretended to be very interested in the hole. Out of the side of one eye, he could see Richard peering down. Oh, look, he shouted to himself. Honey! He pulled out one sachet and made a great show of peeling back the lid and slurping the contents. He sucked and chewed noisily. Richard watched from above. I wonder if there's any more, Tim yelled into the hole. In a flash, Richard dropped lightly to the ground and thrust his hand into the tree. 
He pulled out the sachet and shoved it into his mouth without opening it. He munched happily, not knowing or caring that the whole school was watching. Finally, he spat out the plastic container. Well done, Tim, said Ms. Fish. The two boys headed for the classroom. Tim paused as a pain growled inside his chest. He winced and kept going. He wondered how long the teachers would go on letting Richard disturb the class. He didn't seem to be learning anything at all, and he was annoying everyone else. That night, Richard sat in the corner of the lounge, fiddled with a toilet roll. He turned it over and over. He seemed hardly aware that Tim and his mother and father were in the room. Dad tossed Richard two sachets of honey. Here, he said, give one to Tim. Richard turned them over in his hand. He looked at Tim for just a second, and then shoved both into his mouth. Aren't you going to share? said Mum. Bit late for that, Tim grinned. He gave Richard a friendly punch. One day, Tim told him, one day me and you were going to the snow. He closed his eyes and described what he saw. Richard fiddled with the toilet paper, not taking his gaze from it for a second. That snow, said Tim, is as fresh as an apple, still on the tree. Is it as cool as the breeze across a deep, deep lake? Oh, I see that snow like it's here now. Me and you, there, Richard. We're sliding down the slope on skis, and there's a snowman. You know what? You know what the snowman's doing, Richard? You know what he, the snowman's doing? Is he just standing there? Is he just silent under the blue sky? No, the snowman's dancing, Richard. Oh, you should see him. He's leaping around and skipping and throwing up his arms. He's picking up snow and throwing it into the air. Oh, that snowman, he's full of joy. He doesn't care that the sun will melt him away. He doesn't worry about what's coming. He's king of the snow. There's no tomorrow for him. Oh, look at him dance. Look at him dance. Tim smiled beneath closed eyes. We'll see him, Richard. We will, you and me. One day we will see snow. One day we'll go to the mountains. One day we'll see the snowman dance. Tim opened his eyes, and the snow-covered scene vanished. I'm going to lie down, he said. I don't feel too good. He picked up his crutches and swung out of the room. Richard turned over the toilet roll, over and over. Ah, 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 he said. The boy's mum and dad looked at each other with tear-filled eyes. Tim will never see snow, said mum. Not in Australia, in December. He might make it, said the father. Sometimes snows in the mountains in June. June will be too late, said mum. Should have taken him last year, said dad. Don't blame yourself, said mum. The doctor won't allow it, remember? Ah, ah, ah. But Richard. The noise was louder, more violent than usual. He hugged the toilet roll to his chest and rocked like a baby. Mum glanced over at Richard. Do you think he knows? She said. Dad scowled as a truck changed gear on the road outside. It sounded its horn loudly. He doesn't know about anything, except toilet rolls. Here we go again. Richard's face lit up. He raced out the door. Ah! 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 At the front gate, he jumped up and down, waving his arms crazily. The truck has a large toilet roll painted on the side. Underneath was written, Soft as Dawn. The driver leaned over and wound down the passenger side window. Then he threw something into the air. It turned over and over and bounced crazily into the front yard. Richard scampered after his prize, one tightly wrapped roll of toilet paper. He grabbed it eagerly and clutched it to his chest. Ah, 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 he yelled happily. Another truck rounded the corner and the driver also threw out a toilet roll. He tooted and laughed as Richard gathered up the bouncing paper. A third and a fourth the truck did the same. Each driver enjoyed his daily ritual. Passers-by stopped and stared at the strange sight. Richard ran back inside with the loot. He headed towards his favourite place, the loft. A large, warm space on the roof of the house. He climbed up the ladder and disappeared through a main hole. Gee, I don't know, said Dad. All these blasts at toilet rolls, we'll have to put a stop to it. It's just making them worse. With the laughing stock of the neighbourhood. Harry James asked me if I'm going to build a public toilet in the front yard. I'll bet the factory doesn't know their drivers are throwing away rolls and rolls every day. It's been going on for years. Have you looked at his face? said Mum. It's the only time Richard ever smiles. When those toilet rolls come bouncing over the fence, he's happy. You can't stop that. It's a fire risk, said Dad. All that paper up inside the roof, the whole place could go up in smoke. Think of it as free insulation, said Mum. If you've been up there lately, go and have a look, and I don't let him see you, or you'll cop the usual. Mum silently climbed the ladder and peered in the loft. Her eyes widened. A huge castle made of toilet rolls filled the entire space. So much bigger than before. 
turrets and walls and a tall arched entrance. Paper stairs made their way up to the top of the ramparts. Dolls and teddy bears were propped up like archers peering down at the enemy. The whole loft was crammed with thousands and thousands of toilet rolls. Ah, ah, ah! Richard's face appeared over the battlements. He began to fire on the intruder. A shower of bouncing toilet rolls peppered Mum. She quickly ducked down and closed the loft hatch above her. Right, yelled Dad. That's it. Not putting up with this nonsense for one more second. He climbed quickly up the ladder and opened the hatch. Richard, get down from there. I'm putting a stop to this. Tomorrow, I'm going to the factory to stop those drivers throwing out toilet rolls. And all of this is going. Every last one. It's ridiculous. Now come down here at once. Ah, ah, ah. Toilet rolls fell around Dad like mortar shells. He shook his fist at Richard as the angry boy lobbed rolls over the castle walls. Dad ducked and hit his head on the side of the hatch. Then he fell, screaming and grabbing at the rungs of the ladder. He crashed heavily into the floor. Damn it, blast! He yelled. Mum tried to smother a smile. You okay, dear? No, I'm not. It's not funny. I mean it. Every last bit of paper is going out of that loft. Another hailstorm of toilet rolls bounced down on top of him, and the hatch banged shut. In his room, nearby, Tim lay on his bed and listened to the commotion. He shook his head. He knew what the toilet roll castle meant to Richard. Terrible things would happen if he lost the toilet rolls. He'd been collecting them for years, building with them, wrapping things up. His loft was a refuge, a place to go, a warm world of his own. Angry red clouds rolled in Tim's head. Why couldn't Richard talk? Why did he always have to live in a lonely world of his own? Tim looked at his crutches propped against the bed. Life wasn't fair. He closed his eyes and thought of snow. Gentle, falling snow. Drifting down, cleaning the world with its whiteness. Covering the streets and cars. Happy children threw snowballs and laughed. And there he was, the best bit of all. The snowman. Dancing, dancing. Lifting his black hat with a snowy arm. Winking with his coal black eyes. Beckoning Tim. Calling him. Oh, look at that snowman dance, said Tim. Wonderful peace filled his mind. He lay back on his pillow, and for a while the pain in his chest melted away. I'd love to see the snow, he said to himself. If I could see snow just once, I'd be happy forever. Tim opened his eyes, and the vision vanished. Outside the window, the summer sun cooked the brown grass. Oh, no, said Tim. A figure was loping across the lawn, dragging a large garbage bin behind him. Ah, 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 said Richard. Tim could see that Richard was angry. He knew his brother was running away from home, taking his most precious possessions with him. Come back, Richard, yelled Tim, but he was too late. Richard had already disappeared along the footpath. Tim struggled out of bed and searched frantically for his shoes. Where were they? Under the bed. He grabbed a crutch and hooked them out. He quickly put on the shoes and limped outside. Richard, Richard, he yelled. His voice echoed along the empty street. Richard was nowhere to be seen. Tim set off along the road. His crutches rubbed under his arm. With every step, the pain in his chest grew worse. He knew that he was supposed to take it easy, not strain himself. Richard, he called. Richard! Tim was worried. He should have told Mum and Dad so that they could use their car to search. But Dad was angry with Richard. That might be the last straw. But Richard could be in danger. He would often run across roads without looking. At this very moment, he might be on top of someone's roof or hanging off a bridge over a river. Or crawling down a drain. Blood red clouds began to swirl in Tim's mind, but there was no time to call the snowman to drive them away. Sweat began to form on his brow, and he felt faint. Tim wandered the streets for hours, up and down, along and around. He couldn't find Richard anywhere. He tried all of the usual places the bridge, the station, the river, nothing. Finally, Tim leaned his crutches on the wall and sat down. He felt very, very tired. He had just decided to give up and go home when something caught his eye. A letterbox. A letterbox wrapped in toilet paper. Richard had been this way. Tim struggled on. A dog ran past. A dog wrapped up in a paper bandage. This dog meant Richard for sure. The houses gave way to fields. A herd of black cows grazed lazily in the sunshine. Twenty black cows and one white one. The farmer was cursing and pulling away the shroud of paper which had entwined his mooing animal. Tim hobbled on, following the paper trail. He found it hard to breathe. He was hot, and a pain in his chest grew worse and worse. But he kept going. He had to. Finally, he stopped. 
A long stream of paper fluttered in the gutter. It wound like a country road through the long brown grass to a barbed wire fence. A few strands of paper were impaled on the wire. The trail led through the fence and into... The train line, gasped Tim. He rolled under the fence and climbed up onto the tracks. Cold sweat formed on his brow as he followed the steel and paper trail. His breath came in gasps. His chest seemed to be enclosed in a ring of iron which grew tighter and tighter. The tips of his crutches slipped and jarred on the heavy stones between the tracks. Tim knew what lay around the corner. He tried not to think about it. Think of snow, he said to himself. Think of snow. But the snow would not come. The dancing snowman had deserted him. There was nothing but angry red clouds and a railway line running across a tall, tall bridge. At the centre of the bridge, a tiny figure danced crazily, waving a long white stream of paper, a fragile rope which suddenly broke and fell uncaringly into the river far, far below. Tim stopped when he reached the bridge. It stood on huge wooden legs which spanned the river beneath. At the top it was narrow with one set of tracks which ran along close to the edge. Gentle vibrations, growing strongly, came up through Tim's crutches. The train was somewhere on the other side of the bridge. Tim wanted to run onto the bridge and grab his brother, but he knew that in his heart, if he did, neither of them would come back. Richard, he screamed. Richard, the train's coming. This way, quick, get off the bridge. He took one wobbling step towards his brother, but couldn't go any further. One crutch lodged in a gap in the planks. Tim fell, sprawling between the tracks. His chest hurt terribly, and one leg was bleeding freely. For a second, he just wanted to stay there, just stop and let things happen. Blood-red clouds swirled. He lay back and shook his head. Then he closed his eyes. Where are you? He said. Where are you? Don't let me down now. Through the mists of his mind came the wonderful dancing snowman. Calling, 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 beckoning him with a snowy finger. Tim smiled. He opened his eyes and crawled towards his crutches, which were balanced on one of the rails. He moved his fingers like the legs of a spider. He could just reached the crutches and scratched them towards himself. In a second, he had them and was up on his feet. The vibrations from the tracks grew stronger and stronger. He looked towards the other side. In the distance, a train whistle sounded. Richard, he shouted, this is for you. He rummaged in his pocket and pulled out a sachet of honey. He lifted his arm and threw it with all his might. A tiny container arced into the air and fell down, 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 till it disappeared in the pebbles by the river. The train was on the bridge, thundering towards Richard, brakes screaming, sparks flying high into the air. Richard looked down after the honey. He looked at Tim. He looked at the train behind him. Ah! 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 He screamed. Then he ran, stumbling towards his brother, fleeing before the steel monster which screeched and roared towards him. He fell at Tim's feet. The train was upon them. Richard peered down the grassy slope towards the river, searching with his eyes for the honey. Then he jumped off the tracks and bounded over the fence and down the hill. Tim had no strength. He simply fell, like a tree, teetering after the axeman's last blow. He toppled sideways, away from the train. The thundering wheels crunched his crutches to splinters. Tim rolled like a log, down the gentle bank and under the fence. At last he stopped by a small stand of bushes. Ah! 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 came Richard's voice from the river, far below. He scrabbled amongst the rocks, looking for the honey. Stupid little idiots, came a fading voice from the last carriage of the train as it rushed into the distance. Richard struggled up, back to his brother with a sachet of honey, held it out with one hand. But Tim was too tired to even notice. Later, at home, the doctor pulled the sheet back up to Tim's chin and looked at the sleeping figure. He's a very sick little boy, he said to the two parents. He must have walked ten kilometres on crutches, and that fall down the bank was too much for him. It was getting near the time anyway. You should think about putting him into hospital soon. Tim's dad shook his head. We've talked about this over and over, he said. We knew this day was going to come, and we're ready for it. We want him to spend his last days in his own bed, at home, with us. Above their heads in the bedroom ceiling, an eye swiveled and stared down through a small hole. The eye moistened and formed a tiny droplet. The tear wobbled for a second and then fell. It spun, glistening through the warm air and plopped under Tim's cheek. His mother wiped it away, thinking it was her son's. She was right, and she was wrong. He's crying in his sleep, she said. The eye in the ceiling blinked. He wanted to see the snow, said Dad. He's never been to the snow. He's never seen a snowman, or a snowstorm. It's the only thing he ever wanted. They all looked out of the window. Insects buzzed in the warm summer air. Now he never will, said Mo. 
Wish he could see snow before he... She felt it almost impossible to say the word dies. The eye and the ceiling vanished. The terrible banging and crashing came from above. A long barking howl filled the air. Ah! 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 What on earth? said the doctor. They all looked up at the ceiling. Oh, it's Richard, said Dad. He's had a bad day. Don't worry, I'll get him down. He'll be okay. After the doctor had gone, Dad climbed the ladder to the loft. The noise grew worse and worse. Dad pushed up the hatch and peered inside. A hail of toilet rolls drove him back. What's happening? said Mum. He's gone crazy. He's completely wrecked the castle. Demolished the whole thing. Toilet rolls everywhere. Suddenly, the noise stopped. Mum climbed the ladder and peeked in. Well? said Dad. He's angry about something, said Mum. He's sitting there with a the toilet roll. He's pulling it to shreds, just biting it and ripping it to bits like a wild animal. She quietly lowered the hatch and climbed down. Do you think he knows, said Dad, about Tim? Who knows what he knows, said Mum. Just for once, we're going to have to forget about Richard and worry about Tim. Two days passed. Tim grew weaker and weaker. In the ceiling above all was quiet. Richard refused to come down. Every time the hatch was lifted, a furious hail of toilet rolls met the intruder. Just leave him, said Dad. He'll get sick of it up there and he'll come down, just like he always does. He's hardly touched the food I put up there, said Mum. But I've got something special. I've been keeping it for an emergency. She fetched a two-litre jar of honey from the kitchen. This ought to bring him down, she said, and climbed the ladder. Carefully lifted the hatch. She waved the honey jar through the opening. Richard, she said softly, look what I've got. There was no reply. Then, before she could blink, the honey disappeared, snatched from her hands. Rats! she yelled. He's grabbed it. Now he'll never come down. We just have to leave him. Both parents went down to Tim's room. They were shocked by what they saw. Get the doctor, said Dad. Tim was pale, sweaty. His eyes rolled wildly in his head, and his breath came in heavy gasps. Above them in the ceiling, an eye stared down, then disappeared. Outside, the warm summer breeze was swinging around, becoming cooler. The doctor arrived within 20 minutes and gave Tim an injection. Stay with him, he said. I'll wait in the lounge. It's not going to be long. Tim opened his eyes and started to sit up. His father lifted him, so he sat upright on the pillows. Want to look out, said Tim, at the garden. His father pushed the bed until it was hard up against the window. Without warning, something crashed into the path outside. Dad stared out. Tile, he gasped. Tiles come off the roof. Another tile hurtled down and smashed into a thousand pieces. Then another, and another. It's Richard, said Mum. He's on the roof and he's wrecking the place. Like a furious fiend, Richard grabbed the tile after tile and threw them to the ground. And he crawled up and over to the other side of the roof. He grabbed tiles wildly and tossed them into the air. Soon there was a yawning hole on both sides of the roof. The wind dropped completely. It was the stillness that always came before a cool change in Melbourne. And still, tiles fell. Get the fire brigade, said Mum. We have to get him down. No, nope, said Dad. This is one time when Richard is not getting all the attention. He took his wife's hand and led her back to their fevered son. What's going on? said Tim weakly. Nothing for you to worry about, said Dad. You just lie back there and think about... Snow, said Mum softly. She nodded through the door at the doctor. He quietly left the room and went outside, placed a ladder against the wall, climbed to the top. Good grief, he said, as he stared down into the roofless house, he turned and scrambled back down, he beckoned Mum through the window. What's up? she whispered. He's taken off all his clothes, said the doctor, and he smeared honey all over himself. And those toilet rolls, he's... Cold breeze stirred and turned into a gust. He's turned up all those toilet rolls into little scraps. It's not one left. The gust became a gale and lifted a billion tiny pieces of toilet paper into the air. From his bed by the window, Tim's eyes grew wide. He stared in amazement at the eddying cloud of white flakes. Snow! Tim choked. Oh, it's snowing. Oh, just look at that snow. The snow! Said Tim. It's as fresh as an apple still on the tree. It's as cool as the breeze across a deep, deep lake. Oh, I thought I'd never see it. Another gust lifted the paper and drove it crazy like a billion white bees swarming in furious silence over a winter garden. Then the wind dropped, and the paper began to settle. It filled the air and flurried down, covering brown grass with a snow-white coat. 
Branches bowed in reverence. Car disappeared like a cake under Christmas icing. Drifts formed on the window. Distant houses vanished under the swirling clouds. The world was white, white, white. Look, called Tom. Look. Yes, it is. I'm sure it is. A snowman. Oh, can you see the snowman? And there, faintly emerging from his private storm, was Richard. Paper stuck to the honey. A wild, snowy figure, prancing and dancing amongst the flurries. The finest snowman ever, dressed in a warm white coat. Tim gazed in wonder as his dream came true before his staring eyes. Just look at that, he said in wonder. A snowman. Look at him go. He gave a happy laugh. His last laugh. He lay back on the pillows with an enormous smile on his face. His last smile. And he closed his eyes for the last time. And went off to dance with the snowman forever.